Number 10. The Rainbow Pool If we asked you to look for a colorful rainbow, you'd most likely cast your gaze up to the sky above. Where you probably wouldn't think to look would be the forest floor. Brent Rawson and his girlfriend were talking about a romantic walk through First Landing State Park in Virginia in November 2018 when they came across a bizarre rainbow pool. Stretching out in front of them between the trunks of the trees were waves of color reflected on the water that flowed through the marshy forest. It looked like something straight out of a fairy tale. But what caused this unusual usual rainbow phenomenon. Jeff Ripple, a former Florida Swamp Walk leader, said in an interview with the BBC, The rainbow sheens found as a thin film on top of pooled water in swamps and marshes are the result of natural oils released by decaying vegetation or the biological processes of anaerobic bacteria reducing iron in the soil. Jeff further explained that the water needs to be still for long periods in order for the rainbows to appear. Movement by sheet flow, current, or wind disturbance would destroy the fragile rainbow film, he said. So if you ever come across a rainbow pool, be sure to take a few pictures. Number 9. The Abandoned Wooden Russian House Standing among the trees in the district of Kostroma Oblast in Russia is a creepy abandoned house that looks like it's full of ghosts. It's believed that the house was built by an industrialist named Markov at the end of the 19th century. It served as his dacha, a term used for the second homes of wealthy individuals that were often located in the suburbs of big cities. The house has two floors with a tower and an ornate pavilion out in the front yard. As you get closer, you'll notice beautifully carved details with red windows surrounded by geometric designs and an intricate roof edging that almost looks like it's made of lace. Although the house appears to be in good condition, it's pretty clear to see that it has not been lived in for a long time. Some planks have come loose and are falling off, and inside the ceiling and walls are cracked with the furniture long gone. This house isn't the only one in this location though, although it's set apart from the others. In fact, this was once the site of an entire village which has since been abandoned. But why was this beautiful house abandoned? And where did everyone go? We don't know for sure, but it's believed that as developments grew in other areas of Russia offering better opportunities, the people gradually began moving away, leaving their homes behind. This was a common practice at the time, as often villages that were seen as unpromising would be closed down, meaning that the people would relocate to better areas. Thankfully, in recent years, this house was saved and rebuilt by a Russian entrepreneur and is now open as a forest hotel and museum to allow you to explore and learn more about the area itself. Number 8. The Wishing Trees in the woodlands in the UK, there are multiple tree trunks studded with coins that have been hammered into the bark. Often, these are just long, dead stumps. But on other occasions, this odd practice has taken place on a living tree. But why would someone go out of their way to hammer the contents of their piggy bank into a tree? The reason people do this relates to a tradition of wishing trees. The concept of a wishing tree goes back centuries. The first occurrences we know about are in the early 18th century, over 300 years ago. It's unclear how the custom first started or by whom, but given the fact that you can find these wishing trees all over the country, it seems that it was a pretty popular thing to do. If someone was feeling ill, they might hammer a coin into the bark in the hope that the illness goes with it. It's believed that if someone was then greedy enough to take the coin out, they would get sick instead. Others would choose sturdy trees such as beech and holly trees to place their coins into, with the belief that if they were able to make it past the bark and into the wood of the tree trunk, their wish would come true. The tradition of a wishing tree is common in many countries across the world, such as in Japan, where people will write paper wishes and hang them in the branches. Number 7. An Abandoned Soviet Helicopter Deep in the Russian wilderness about 1,490 miles from Moscow is an abandoned MI6 helicopter that's been sitting in a boggy swamp for over 40 years. The helicopter has a light gray fuselage with long rotors, all of which are still attached, although one is perilously close to the trunk of a nearby tree. Its engines have been stripped and its tailpiece is missing. But aside from this, its condition is fairly good given its location. But why is it all the way out here? Believe it or not, it has nothing to do with a conflict or being shot down in battle. It's here because of a simple mistake. The MI6 helicopter and its five-man crew were making a refueling stop nearby on the way to prospect for oil. Once the tank was filled, they set off again, but they were only in the air for about five minutes before their engines failed and they plummeted into the swamp below. The reason for their crash is that the refueling crew had mistakenly filled the helicopter with gasoline mixed with water. Thankfully, all of the crew survived, but it goes to show that it's super important to fill up with the right fuel the next time you're out at the pumps. Number 6. The Humongous Fungus 
The sweetly named honey mushroom really isn't as adorable as the name sounds. It's actually quite a killer. The only issue is that you probably won't even know it's there unless you know what you're looking for. Located in the Blue Mountains of Eastern Oregon, the honey mushroom is the largest single living organism on the planet. Throughout the fall season, small clusters of golden brown mushrooms sprout up from the ground at the base of a few unlucky trees. You might be wondering how something so small holds a record for being so big. The reason for this is that all of these mushrooms are part of the same living organism, and most of it is underground. As of 2015, it spanned an area of three square miles, and it's slowly but surely killing off the forest above. Once the fungus has taken hold, a tree can take decades to die as it's taken over from the inside. The honey mushroom will emerge from underground right underneath the tree, spreading up through the trunk. The unfortunate tree will try to fight it by pushing it out of holes in its bark. These attempts are futile though, as all the while the fungus is eating away at the tissue of the tree, turning it white and gooey inside. Not only does the attack take place on the inside, but the mushroom now has the tree surrounded. Talk about a slow and painful way to go. It's okay though, as the Oregon honey mushroom plays the waiting game quite well. It's estimated to be between 2,000 and 8,000 years old. Number 5. Fairy Doors all over the world, you can find trees with fairy doors. These colorful doors come in all shapes and sizes, often brightly colored with decorations including flowers, butterflies, and leaves. Fairy doors are said to be portals between our world and the fairy realm. Often they're used by children to help to feed their imaginations. Some little ones also find they help them to deal with bad dreams or take their worries away. Fairies have existed in many cultures dating back hundreds of years. For example, in the Irish countryside, they'll often travel through fairy rings or fairy forts. Ireland has lots of close links to fairies, as in Irish folklore they're seen as one of the founding tribes. You might think of fairies as being cute and innocent, but fairies of old would often be considered mischievous creatures that sometimes steal children through their fairy doors and take them to the fairy realm. Nowadays, fairies have a much sweeter reputation, and people will install fairy doors so that the magic creatures can visit them. For example, in the town of Ann Arbor in Michigan in 1993, a number of fairy doors popped up overnight on various trees, much to the local community's delight. Although it's doubtful that fairies actually exist, many find comfort in leaving them gifts or writing letters to them to pop behind their doors. Have you ever seen a fairy door? Let us know in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 4. The Stairs to Nowhere Traipsing your way through the woods of New Hampshire, stone walls start to appear in front of you. The gray, mossy rocks form arches at the base, but more curiously on top of the wall is a staircase that curves around at almost a 90-degree angle before suddenly stopping in midair. This is the Stairs to Nowhere. Locals have a different name for this structure and refer to the ruins as Madame Sherry's Castle. But who was Madame Sherry, and why did she have a castle out here in the middle of the woods? The truth of the matter is that there wasn't exactly a castle here. Instead, there was once a mansion built by a famous costume designer from the 1920s, Antoinette Sherry. Originally hailing from New York, Madame Sherry bought up land in the forests of New Hampshire to build a summer retreat. Sherry's castle was home to many lavish parties. The hostess herself would often drive around the area in a custom-made Packard car in a luxurious cream color, whilst her pet monkey perched on her shoulders. Unfortunately, her ambition was bigger than her purse strings. Eventually, Madame Sherry abandoned the property, letting it be reclaimed by the wilderness. The answer as to why there's only a staircase left comes down to a fire that ravaged the ruins in 1960. As the site was abandoned, it fell prey to local vandals, who sadly set it on fire. As a result, only the stone features such as this grand staircase remained. One thing is for sure, Madame Sherry's masterpiece still attracts visitors to this day. Even the famous lady herself can be spotted paying a visit to her old summer home. Sometimes passers-by have spotted the ghostly figure of a rather well-dressed woman standing on the staircase. Number 3. The Longest Railway Tunnel in the World the Forest of Dean in the UK is a large nature reserve and area of natural beauty which spans from Gloucester in England across the border into Wales. Its size is not the only vast thing about it though, as it also houses what was once the longest railway tunnel in the world. Its size might not seem all that impressive nowadays though, as the high tunnel is only 1,083 yards long, but you have to remember that it was built in 1810 at a time long before commercial rail travel was a thing. 
Originally, the tunnel would have had horse-drawn carriages running through it to transport important goods such as coal between the two countries. Later on, the tunnel was widened by legendary engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel so that passenger carrying steam trains could run through it. Renovating what was still an incredibly groundbreaking tunnel yet again was not easy, given the fact that Brunel had already helped to design and construct most of the railroad between the southwest of England and London by this time, he was the best man for the job. Trains and horses and carts weren't the only travelers through the tunnel. School children would often use the tunnel as a handy shortcut to get to class in the neighboring town and would have to avoid the trains that went speeding past them. Brunel's work stood the test of time as the tunnel stayed in use until the 1960s when the line fell victim to Beeching's rail cuts, which put a stop to many railways up and down the country. Since then, it's been reclaimed by the forest. During the COVID lockdown, Alex Watkins and Max Jones decided to find all the entrances and exits to this famous tunnel, documenting what they found in a series of photographs. They join many of the intrepid explorers that venture off the beaten path to clamber through its bricked-up entrance to explore this piece of industrial history. Number 2. Vintage Pickup Trucks in a U.S. woodland, nine Chevrolet pickup trucks were left parked up among the trees. The crazy thing is, every single one of them is up for sale. Granted, they're not exactly in top condition as they've been left out in the elements for over 50 years. A lot of the paint has rusted away, and we can bet you anything you like that all of their engines have long since seized up. That means they won't be driving out of there anytime soon. Despite all this, though, they're still rather desirable. These vintage motors come from the popular advanced design era of the 1940s and 50s. One in good condition will set you back $50,000. But how much would you pay for a literal rust bucket? Realizing some of the hidden value of these cars, one explorer offered the owner of the vehicles, yes, they are owned and not abandoned, $10,000 for the entire group of nine pickups. We think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? However, the owner declined and wanted $5,000 per truck. To the best of our knowledge, they remain unsold. So if you're in the market for an albeit rusty piece of automotive history, why not head down and make an offer? Number 1. Barnes Old Cemetery Barnes Old Cemetery is located on the outskirts of West London. You could easily walk past the brushwood it's located in quite easily without even knowing it's there. However, if you step inside, you'll be greeted by something that seems to come out of a fantasy landscape with gnarled yew trees sprawling through and an area abundant with flora. A path stretches between the gravestones framed by trees creating an elegant archway. Most of the graves are in a state of disrepair with a lot of the names barely legible. The cemetery was opened in 1857 and as the population of London rapidly expanded, people needed more places to bury their loved ones. The graveyard has a few notable residents, including a founding member of the Football Association of England, Ebenezer Cobb Morley, graves of fallen soldiers from both of the World Wars, and most curiously, the remains of Julia Martha Thomas, who was murdered by her maid, Kate Webster. She was dismembered, and for a long time, the location of her head was unknown. That was until a century later when it was uncovered in the garden of famous naturalist Sir David Attenborough. A more spooky visitor to the cemetery was Spring-Heeled Jack. Three Victorian ladies had been walking through the area in September 1837. They'd been enjoying their time until they claimed that a human-like creature with glowing eyes had attacked them, leaving their clothes in tatters. Spring-Heeled Jack, as he became known, then started to appear in other parts of London over the coming months. Multiple reports claimed he could jump over very long distances with ease, leading to the nickname and adding to the superstition around him further. Despite many theories, no one knows who or what he truly was. Eventually, Barnes Old Cemetery was closed in 1966. At the time of this video, the local council has no plans to renovate or restore the site, and in a way, we quite like that. Thanks for watching. Have you ever discovered something strange in the woods? Tell us about it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.